We'll see. Okay. It is possible to utilize for God's service. Oh, it says our custom is not to drink anything before Havdalah. It is possible to use to serve God according to the Torah, all of our character traits. Huh? You have a sense of humor, you can use that. You're a person that's, how do you say, nosy, you can use that. You like to talk, you like to be quiet, you like to be, all the character traits you're, what do they call it? A, 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 a person that's, that's outgoing, ingoing, introverted, extroverted, all the character traits that there are, you can use them all to serve God. This includes even those things that are not good, and even those things that are evil, like their names and descriptions indicate. So it's something anger, cause. For instance, Rav Meshulam Zusha of Anipoli, Zusha of Anipoli, he is one of the uh, of the uh, <clears throat> those who signed on the Tanya, saying that's a they gave his, his haskama, his, his praises of the book, of, of a blessed memory, he said he was in jail. And he said he learned a number of things from serving God from a thief. Now, a thief is not good. I don't know if any of you have ever had something stolen from you, but it's a terrible feeling, a terrible feeling, especially if you come home and you realize that your house has been ransacked. So a thief is really a terrible person, a terrible person. Is pure egotism. He doesn't care about what the other person. The other, the, he steals from somebody who worked hard, got money, has possessions, gather up things that he likes, has the, in his own house, and he breaks into the house and he steals in one minute what this person could have been that he worked for for 50, 60 years. That's terrible. But nevertheless, you can learn seven good things from a thief. Seven good things from a thief. Number one, he works quietly. A thief. He works quietly without other people knowing, right? In other words, you can. What can you learn from that? You do your business is between you and God. You don't care what people think about you so much. You have to know what's right, of course. You have to know what's right. But when you know what's right, you you do it quietly. You don't have to have your picture on the papers. <clears throat> Number one, working quietly, you have an intimate relationship between you and God. You just do what's good thing, the right thing, quiet thing, right? You do good deeds. You don't have to advertise it to everybody. <clears throat> Number one. Number two, he's ready to put himself into danger. A thief puts himself in the danger. Also the same thing to serve God. <clears throat> if you want to do something good, you have to be willing to put yourself into danger. Sometimes there's situations you have to speak out. Sometimes there's situations where you have to do something, right? It might put you into danger, financial danger, whatever. Danger. There were a lot of Jews that came from Europe, they came to America, and the only way that they could get jobs was to work on Shabbat, and they refused. They said they're not going to work on Shabbat, they worked, they figured out something else, they made maybe, uh, they became a tailor in their house or something. They put themselves in the danger to do what Torah mitzvah said. Number three, the smallest detail of a thief, the smallest detail is of great importance to him, <clears throat> right? exactly what time the alarm goes on, and then exactly when the person's going to be home, exactly where, the, the, where the, the, the money is hidden, where the safe is, what the combination is. Every detail is important. Also in serving God. Don't think just a general way. I'll put on tefillin, that's good enough. Every detail of the tefillin should be important. The tefillin should be kosher. They have to be good tefillin. They have to be but the, the tefillin that are, 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 how do you say, checked regularly. Every detail has to be important. That's just an example. Every detail is important. And you understand all the words of prayer, you understand every word, just not just every detail is important. Number three, a thief labors with great toil. He puts tremendous effort through what he's doing. He wants something for free, he wants something for nothing, <clears throat> but he's willing to put tremendous effort into stealing those things, right? He runs away from the this. He's willing to, to, to make a, uh, whatever it is, break through the, the ceiling, come down through a rope. He works with tremendous effort. Number, uh, what, that's number five. Here's number five, alacrity. What's alacrity mean? Quickness. Everything he does is quickness. He's not sluggish in anything that he does. He's not lazy. Alacrity means that everything he does is with, with uh, say, in the Hebrew, they call it zrizus. Zrizus, it's done with a, a, a live, lively. He's lively. Everything that he does 
is full of life and does it. Right? Number that's number five. Number six, he's confident and optimistic. Huh? He has faith. A thief has faith. He has faith that he's going to not get caught. He has faith that there's going to be money. He has faith that he's going to come out with that money. And he's optimistic, right? He's confident. He's sure of himself. He doesn't have any doubts in what he's doing. A thief. He's no doubts and he's optimistic. Terrible. The guy's a terrible, a disgusting person, a thief. He's making people feel miserable. He's taking, but nevertheless, there's the terrible qualities. He uses his, all these good qualities he's got for bad, but nevertheless, we can use it for good. That's no, quality number six. Quality number seven, if he doesn't succeed first, he, he tries again and again. He keeps trying, right? This bank didn't work, so I'll try another bank. Another. Okay, he's not giving you lessons on how to be a thief, but he is telling, telling you that it is possible to use the qualities that the thief misuses that we can use it for proper. And my, my teacher, Rabbi Mendel Futafas, he told me that obviously uh, Zusha Manipoli, he wasn't in prison for a long time. Because if he was in prison for a long time, he'd know there's just seven things you can learn from a thief. He said, there's thousands of things you can learn from a thief because Rabbi Mendel Futafas was in Siberia for like five to seven years. I don't know, to this day, I don't know how long. But he was there for a long time. He said, from there, you can learn from thieves. From criminals, you can learn thousands of things. He said. <clears throat> this is th so you can learn bad things. Okay, you want me to do tomorrow? I'll do tomorrow. Why not? You always do tomorrow. Why not? Don't take any time. <clears throat> okay, it's a Jewish custom not to shave a baby boy's hair until his third birthday. Huh? It's a Jewish custom. A lot of people take him up to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai here in Miron. And they do the upshirin over there. The first haircutting is called an upshirinish of a baby boy. It's a Jewish custom and it has tremendous importance. The essence of the custom is educating the child to leave the side locks of his hair uncut. You're not supposed to cut the sides of your hair too close. Some really make a big thing. They have it hanging down. Chabad usually does not have it. If they do have it, it's just behind the ear and not the look. And from the day of the haircutting, Leaving the peyot is a custom to take particular care, and also from that day on, that the boy, only three three years old, that he should wear a talit katan, a small talit. You know, a, what is it like this? Talit katan is this garment. It has the tzitzit on it on the four corners. The child is small, and to re, also re, 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 to say the morning blessings that we talked about in the uh, modani, we talked about in the devar malchut. <clears throat> And the grace after meals, and also the blessing after eating, and also to say Shema in the nighttime before you go to sleep. That is Tuesdays. Okay, my friends, God bless you all. There will be a class at three o'clock. Anybody is wants to come. I mean, I hope it's not exactly all at three o'clock all the time, <clears throat> but it, the, we'll, I'll put it up on YouTube. And there will be a story, God willing, at three o'clock tomorrow. As I said, there will not be a class tomorrow. Tomorrow morning okay. class there will not be. God bless you all. Have a good day with Mashiach now. No story now? No story now? No, no, no. Stories in the afternoon. Shalom. So